So just a modern program, I really need to understand the computer hardware and how it interacts with software. Let's talk about that in today's video. This video is brought to you by the Learn Programming Academy's PHP for Beginners course. Build a complete content management system from scratch with PHP and MySQL in this course. Visit lpa.dev slash YouTube PHP or click on the link in the description below. Welcome back, my name is Tim Bachalka with another programming tip of the day. And we're talking about whether modern programmers need to really understand the computer hardware at a deep level. And uh, I'll start by saying that uh, I've met programmers at all levels. I've got programmers who understand hardware at a really deep level and are really experts with hardware. I've met programmers who have got a bit of hardware knowledge and some who know absolutely nothing. So the good news is that uh, they've all got jobs. So what that means is in general, you don't really need to understand the computer hardware to get a job. Now, there are exceptions to that, and I'll talk about that a little bit uh, later in the video. But uh, I think it's actually a good idea to have some understanding of computer hardware, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, the reason that you don't need that understanding today is that uh, to a large degree, computer languages that are in use today, like Java, uh, C Sharp, and Python, they're a high level programming language. So there's uh, an abstraction layer between the what you're writing your code and the computer hardware. So you're not dealing with chip access to chip level access or anything of that nature. So it's, uh, it really doesn't need you to actually understand computer hardware to that level Whereas in years gone by, you really needed to have a fundamental understanding of the chipset and uh, how to uh, get the most out of it to exploit it for your hardware. So it's a good thing that uh, you don't need to do that because that means that you can write a program in those languages and uh, support a range of operating systems that uh, run on different hardware. So that's, that's definitely a good thing. But uh, certain jobs, getting back to certain jobs that uh, need that, if, you are, if you're looking to get into something like perhaps embedded programming, that's where you're creating software for devices. You know, you're actually writing software that actually is residing on a chip, typically an assembly language or C or something like that. You probably would benefit from computer hardware knowledge. If you're wanting to, say, get into the Linux kernel and uh, support that open source project, some knowledge of computer hardware would be very beneficial because uh, that uh, is written in a range of low-level languages. C, it's got some assembly and so forth. So you really should uh, probably have some knowledge if you're getting into that. And other things, uh, another example would be device drivers. So if you're writing uh, software for us like video card drivers or a printer driver or something like that, they're often written in assembly language or C and having a knowledge of the computer hardware that uh, the uh, software that you're writing will, will actually ultimately run on would be very beneficial. So in those cases, yes, you probably do need some computer hardware experience and maybe it's mandatory. Certainly having that knowledge would be, uh, I would think would be very desirable for those positions. So with that said, if you're not looking to get into those areas, I still think it's useful for you to have a bit of an understanding of computer hardware. So things like, for example, if you're using a, a variable of a data type bit or a byte, or using that variable in one of your programs, I think it'd be very useful to know that how does that actually get stored in binary on the computer. So you know what actually happens so when you actually create that uh, variable in your computer, how does that get stored on the computer in memory? That's a useful skill to have, because in some cases that can help you become a more efficient programmer, because you've got more of an understanding of what's going on uh, you know, under the hood, so to speak. And even other variables like strings, for example, and uh, real numbers or doubles, uh, that would be uh, very useful to understand how that gets stored in the computer hardware, because again, it can just get you thinking and uh, hopefully making you a little bit more efficient as well. So I guess for these days, there's less of a need to be focusing too much on how much memory your computer program's using. But certainly that is an issue. You can run out of uh, memory, even with today's modern computers that have you know, come probably standard with eight gigabytes of RAM. That's fairly standard these days or higher. It is still possible to run out of memory. And that's one of the reasons for that is that the operating systems that we're using today enable so many different computer programs to be running concurrently that uh, even with a lot of memory, you can still run out of memory because the memory on that particular computer may be used by lots of other programs. So it still pays to be efficient where possible. And just thinking about uh, you know, being efficient is a good skill just basically for a programmer to have in my opinion. But uh, giving a bit of an example about uh, RAM, back in the 1980s, I uh, used a computer called the Amstrad CPC 464. So this beauty didn't have a lot of memory. I think, it, I think 64K was the default memory in that particular machine. And it came out with a disk drive and it was pretty revolutionary for the time because prior to that, cassette tape. That's how we used to store our programs on cassette tape. So you can imagine how slow that was. It's a sequential device 
really slow to uh, store your uh, programs and then to actually load them. So they brought out a disk drive, I think it was about 40 megabytes, still pretty small, but compared to a cassette tape, it was fantastic. But it had sequential access only. So it was sort of like a glorified cassette tape if you wanted to get to the end of the, uh, what the contents of the hard drive, you basically had to read through it sequentially. It was nuts. I don't know why they did that. But anyway, like I was a brash young kid who was about sort of 18 or something, and I thought, I can fix this. So I wrote some code in Z80 assembly language, which enabled basic programmers, because it came with a basic language, to access that disk randomly. That means they could write, uh, you know, write accounting programs and things like that that needed to access random parts of the disk to access uh, you know, random contents instead of uh, sequentially reading the data each time. And I had 2K to write it in, 2K of RAM to get that up and going. So in that case, I did need to understand the Z80 CPU at a deep level. I needed to understand the registers and how it all worked. And it was great, it was great information for me to learn, but quite hard to learn because uh, I jumped from basic directly to assembly language. So the point of all this was that back then, it was really important to understand computer hardware and to write a program like that, I felt it was mandatory. There wasn't really any way around it. But again, getting back to today's computers, today's uh, languages rather, Python, C Sharp, uh, Java and so on, you really don't need to deal at that level when you can be a little bit lazy and just think, oh, I'm just gonna, gonna create some more variables here and I'll just create an array here and I'm not worrying about memory. So it, it can be a mindset to get into. So that's why I'm suggesting that it's still a good skill for you to have to learn a bit more about hardware to make you a better programmer because it just gets you thinking and trying to be a bit more efficient in your programming. And that's always a good skill to have. Right, so that's a summary. Uh, do programmers these days need uh, hardware knowledge? Well, for most jobs, as I've outlined, perhaps no. You don't need, need to have any. Some jobs are essential. It would be essential for you to have uh, computer hardware experience and have an understanding of it. but. Uh, in general, no, you don't uh, need to, but I think having that basic uh, computer hardware knowledge would be beneficial and is, is a useful skill for all programmers to have. Alrighty, so I hope that helped. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. If you're ready to look at the next tip, click on up here and you can check that out. If you're interested in coding specific programming videos, click on the link in the bottom left hand corner. Consider subscribing by clicking on the link up here and I'll see you soon.